What's going on, Bones Thugs fam? It's your boy Bones here, and uh, it's been 90 days since we started playing Awaken Chaos Era. It's been a great time. I'm loving it. I can't get enough of it still. Even after the grind, all the experience you gotta get, all the ability gems, all the charms, everything, I'm still having a great time. So, today we're gonna do a 90 day account video where I'm at right now, what I've been doing, how's it going. Just a little bit of update every three months or so, I like to make one of these videos. So the first thing I want to show you guys is my heroes. The reason why we play, right? To collect these heroes. Um, these are just my epics and legendaries that I'm working on. I have a few other uh, elites that I'm working on, but that doesn't really matter to me right now. Um, so, you know, I'm working on my Thesia. She was my very first legendary. I picked her in my rookie summons. I hadn't used her much. But now that I'm towards the end game, now I need a little bit more healing. She's really good. She pairs with Brand very well. And so I'm working on her. I've got pretty much everything maxed out except for level 60. So not maxed out, but got her level 5, got all her abilities done. Um, something that I am slacking in at this point, when I built biggest bottleneck is gold to level up gear and gear itself. So I'm kind of working on some gear dungeon teams. I'm not really able to farm 12 on anything. So I got Brand with the Magic Pass. Um, same with him. I think I got him to 5 on Glyphs. Got his abilities going. Got some gear going. It's not the greatest gear. But he is where I can use him right now. He's still doing a lot for me. He will be 60 sometime soon, but not really soon. Another team that's been fun that I'm working on is the Irondil, Scarlet, and Jacob uh, trio. They're pretty fun together. They're not the greatest team, but they're a fun niche team. Um, he needs to be level 60 pretty soon. Um, his glyphs are at 5, abilities are at 5. Once again, I need some good gear. I, I don't think I have good enough gear for him to really do much, but he needs to be 60 pretty soon. I'm also working on Antinua. Antinua is some of the best deep, single DPS damage in the entire game. Um, people overlook her, but my goodness, she is good, guys. And in the, the dungeons that require her affinity, which is wood, she can do some crazy damage, including the clan boss. So I highly recommend you guys work on her. She is what I'm grinding on right now. I'm trying to get her to glyph level 5. Um, her abilities are maxed. I just maxed them yesterday. She has no gear because I'm just out of cursed. I'm out of any good warrior stuff because they all require almost the exact same thing if they're a DPS. So I'm really running low on it. I am going to be going on stream and redoing my entire roster's gear, and I'll probably post it on YouTube just for anyone who cares about that kind of thing. You may not. Um, Imogen, she's been around. I've had her. She's level 60. I'm just, I can't find anywhere to use her. If you guys think she's good, let me know where you use her, how you gear her, and all that stuff. Because how I have her now just isn't cutting it. So please let me know below if she sucks, if she's good. To me, she's not very good, even with two buffs, like like two different times she got buffed and still hasn't done much with me, so please let me know. Molehex is my favorite man. He's my best damage dealer. He does so much for me, even outside of his affinity. He does some crazy good stuff. I use him all the time. Cyrus is kicking ass, helping me out in Tulpa and in other places. Lover. Blackhorn, I got through Magic Pass. He's my most used character in the entire game. Blackhorn is a freaking pimp. Um, Tia, she's doing me a lot. Um, I'm using her as crowd control everywhere that, except for dungeons, and she's just awesome. Stun set, getting those frozens out there, just awesome. Lydia, I'm not using much. Let me know what you guys think about her. I can't really find a very good place for her. I am using her in one of the dungeons. I don't remember which one. Zatlux, love him. Doing great for me. He's falling off for me. I'm not using him as much as I used to, but still, great character. Santis, I'm working on gear. Um, I've got her HP-wise where she needs to be for the, the gear dungeons, but still needing some love. Still needing some love for sure. Here's what I mentioned earlier, Scarlet and Jacob. Got them all maxed out, got them to 60, so I'm doing some cool things with them. Scarlet, I'm using in a couple dungeons. My Nathalia isn't very good right now. She needs the gear once again. So I've got to start farming the dungeons. William, he's great in certain instances. A lot of people haven't even got him yet that I hear. 
Um, a lot of people want him, love him. Great character. So Ricard, I use him all the time. One of my best damage dealers. My very best clan boss damage dealer. No matter what affinity he is, I always have him in there. Doing great. Uh, Oroch's just a newer project I had. Um, he's great too. Once again, lacking gear. That's where I have everything else maxed out for him. And all that good stuff. So Hakron, even at level 50, is doing me a lot of good. He needs to go to level 60 probably next for me to get me uh, through that level 12 gear dungeon. And everything after this is just future projects. I worked on Celestial Kane, not using him. I thought I'd be using him in a lot of places. Not impressed so far. Let me know where you guys are using your Celestial Kane. Does he need to go to 60? It could be his gear. Uh, he just seems to die off so quick that I'm hardly ever able to use his uh, ultimate, which gives him invincibility to the team. Um, when Strex, I just slap speed on her and I use her in Arena. That's where I use her the most. Everything after this is just projects. I will say after I have, after I take Hakron to 60, then Mythesia, then Irondil, and then Intinuit, they're all going to go to 60. So Hakron and these four up here will be my next 60s. My next total project, like once I'm done with Intinua here, I'm going to move on to Urion. Uh, kind of put him to the back because I didn't hear a lot of people talking about him, but this dude is really fun. I uh, We were hanging out streaming and uh, one of my friends let us let me borrow his, and I didn't realize how fun he is. He's granting his attacks an elemental advantage bonus. His basic stuns, that's huge. He's stealing one positive effect and removing a negative effect, that's huge. And then this is pretty cool. Uh, he deals damage to all enemies and applies defensive down, and then grants a shield for two turns with strength and increases based on this character's attack. So, I mean, his kid doesn't sound that awesome, but he was doing some really good damage for me. And uh, I was very impressed. And he's a light side legendary. Like, I think I can get a lot out of him. Something tells me he might be a good arena character. With the defensive downs and the stuns and the shields and all that. So, I, I'm very excited to work on him. And I'm kind of sad that I didn't work on him sooner. So, besides that, there's no one I'm really in a rush to work on. Post that. Um, I'm thinking maybe Virgil and Lunar Meliza. Those are the only two that I'm we'll work on it after that. I'm sure I'll pull something else that I'll like, but God, give me a Gangelo. We're doing a shard pull Thursday on stream, so hopefully I get something really, really good. So yeah, that's pretty much where I'm at with my roster. I'm fine with the pace I'm going. Just grinding out, leveling up characters is my focus right now. I want to have a very diverse roster where I can pick and choose from anybody that I want eventually. It's only three months in, but I want to get to that point. That's why I haven't rushed to start farming Queens of Tides or any other one like everybody else is because I really just want to spend my energy and my time into getting all my characters that are worth something maxed out as far as I possibly can where they're usable. So moving on to Arena, I'm sitting comfortably. I get to about gold three. That's where I get and I just hang out there. I am not a big time Arena player. I can maybe get better, but I need better gear, right? I would say Arena is last on my priority list of doing good in. I just do my basics. I do a bunch for the event, um, and I do maybe 10 a day just to keep going towards the Magic Pass. So the team I'm using to attack in Arena is this team. In no way am I an Arena expert. <laughs> say that five times quick, because I guarantee you can't. So if you guys see something I should be doing differently, maybe a, a different comp, I know this is the ultimate comp. I just don't care about arena. So that's, the spells I use is defensive down and stun. I try to go more attack with Windstrex resetting Ricard's ultimate and just going through that. And I do pretty well. I don't try to climb to platinum or anything like that. I'm just happy doing the minimum. This is the team I put on defense. I just figure if I put a team like this that's just healing and, you know, staying alive, that most people are going to stay away from it just because they don't want to deal with it, right? They want the easy weaker characters they can get through really quickly. So that's just what I do on defense. Um, as, as you can see on the Magic Pass, I'm at level 14 right now. Let me know your guys' tricks to this too, because I have people flying through this. And then there's some of us that can hardly snail our way through it, right? I'm doing arena. Maybe I'm not doing enough arena. That's the problem. But I, every single day, I use all of my energy plus more every single day with a times two cube, why is it taking me so long? Please let me know why, why it's taking me so long. 
Most people are saying because I'm not doing enough arena, but I've stepped my arena game up somewhat, and I'm still not impressed with my progression. But yeah, I'm still happy with this pace, level 14, we're doing, we're doing better than usual. I think the problem is me not doing enough arena. Let me know if you guys are excited about Evra, because I am, I can't wait to do that. Let me know. Um, the events right now, I got everything I needed in the last event. This arena event, I did not even try. I got the first three enough to get the cube here. See, I literally did just enough to get that cube. These were still better rewards than they have been lately. Uh, I just still have no desire to just keep doing arena and keep doing arena. I will say, though, that I found out that if you lose an arena match, you still get points for this. If I would have known that, I probably would have just kept wasting my tickets and still working towards it. But I did not know that. I got to a point where I couldn't win anymore, uh, like around gold three or something. And so I just was losing out. If I knew that I could lose, I would have kept working towards it. So if you did not know that, even if you lose an arena match, it still counts towards the event. So the next up event is the energy cost, and I'm just going to go buy a bunch of energy meal tickets from the market. So speaking of the market, I've been cutting way back from buying stuff out of here. Used to, I bought every single thing that I saw in here and just kept buying it as long as I had enough gold. But if you've played this game long enough, you know that gold is the biggest bottleneck in the entire game. And the reason is that is because it costs so much to upgrade your gear. So much. And that's the most important thing for me right now. So with that being said, I usually buy these scrolls just because these scrolls will save you time, especially the level 4 ones. You spend so much time and energy into these scrolls, you might as well buy them. I do not buy these charms. I farm them in Endless Trial. You'll get a, enough of these in Endless Trial to kind of do you alright, right? I can kind of hoard them. And I only upgrade gear when I absolutely have to. If I have a new character or if I'm trying to re-gear someone. Otherwise, I would not put any gold into leveling up gear unless you absolutely have to because gold is so precious. I've never had 500,000, I can say. Because I'm always spending it in here and always upgrading something. So also, I'll, I'll buy these obsidians. Not always, but it's good to buy them if you have the gold. I have 500 grand, so I'm fine with that. 5,000 for 1,500? That's not bad. I mean, I'll go ahead and buy it because I have the gold, but I've just accustomed myself to not buying too much stuff in here. Uh, also, look at this gear. It just depends how much how much it is, what the secondaries are, and all that. So we have Dragon Scale. Well, right from the get-go, I don't really care about Dragon Scale. There's probably like two people I can think of that will do good with Dragon Scale. So I'm not going to worry about that. You could pay 16000 just to use it as food. That'd be fine, you know? But look at Rage Boots, you can use that quite a bit, but it has health. If you're putting a Rage on somebody, you probably want to attack on them, so I'm not going to do that. Attack or speed. So, Raptor Pendant. I could use some Raptor. It has attack and it has crit rate. That's horrible, though, because we have a defense of a flat rate on that, so I'm not going to buy any of those. In the Diamond Shop, every single week, you get uh, three advanced crystals for 100, and then you get uh, one four-star pumpkin, five three star pumpkins for 100 diamonds and then uh, three foodies for 80 each. I buy these every single time. It might cost you 400 diamonds or something, but it's worth way more than that. So definitely make sure you guys are buying these every single week. There's a meal coupon that comes in every day. I buy that also. Other than those, I don't buy anything else. Oh, I'm sorry. I do buy the experience cube. <laughs> I'm having the worst time with these experience cubes because I'll be grinding this at night and I fall asleep, right? So I'll buy one, start grinding, and two hours later I pass out and I waste one. I have went through probably five to six hundred diamonds worth of experience cubes this last week because I keep on falling asleep when I'm grinding. Uh, there's nothing you can get around with that. Just don't forget to try to turn those off if you can. I wish I could remember. And the rest of this stuff is just like whatever you want. You know what I mean? I'm going to be spending most of this on meal coupons for the event. Um, but it's whatever you want, right? If you need to summon some more characters, buy some out of here. It's a little expensive, but there's no wrong to this, guys. There really isn't. Everyone's like, what's the best thing? Well, you know, what I do is I buy the pumpkins, I buy the crystals, and, I, and the meal coupons are the best value, right? Because we're always trying to get energy, always. So it's a pretty good value here in the guild bowl. The arena shop, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to be buying these crystals, and I'm going to be buying meal tickets. Um, but you can't go wrong, you know... 
just check the stats. If, you, if these have good stats, then it's okay to buy them. It's still pretty expensive. Also, I mean, Abaddon is great, guys. But just to get 10 for 1500 I feel like that's a little bit ridiculous. But you might be getting a better influx of arena uh, currency than I am. Uh, I really like this hier Hierarchy Soul thing. Ascending a Legendary is huge, guys. I think this is worth 2000 This is not worth 1500 So that's definitely something if you want to work towards, that's good. That's, that's the equivalent of you pulling a Legendary Hero. But yeah, I'll probably be buying a bunch of mule tickets. That's my plan for this event coming up. In the trial shop, same thing. Like this Awakening Soul Arcana, it's 3000 So I don't think it's worth that at all. The only thing I really get out of here is the Advanced Summoning Crystals, the Four Star Pumpkins, and of course, once again, the meal coupons. So in here, I saved up 800 and bought 60 Auroch Matrixes, and that unlocks him. 60 unlocks Auroch. That is what you should be saving up for this. Once you get that, I'd be getting this five star pumpkin, get you some of these advanced crystals, and then of course, once again, meal coupons. I don't know if I'll be spending meal coupons because events currency is hard to come by, right? So I'm kind of thinking, you know, the five star pumpkin after you get the Auroch. I wouldn't get I wouldn't get these 20s unless you just want to keep ascending them. I am not worried about that at all. And just, yeah, those crystals. So that's what I've been spending on, working on. And in the Essence Shop, I've done a video about this. Um, mainly the, the Experience Jelly is what I'm getting. If I have enough, I'll buy this, but that's kind of expensive for 40 for one. It kind of screws you over. But if you need some crystals and you need to summon some stuff, that's probably the two things I go for on here. So in Adventure, I'm still at Chapter 8, 25%. I have not even tried to progress in this in a month or two. It's been a very long time, and it's something I need to start working on. But I'm at the point where I don't need to progress. I can farm all the glyphs that I need at the rate that I need, and I've just been neglecting this. I could probably move on because it's been so long since I've even tried a battle in this. So don't be like me. Keep trying it every couple days and see what you can. When you get a new character, try them out and see what you can do. I could probably go farther than this, and I probably should very soon, um, but I just haven't felt the need to. But for bragging rights or whatever, I need to keep moving on. But that's where I'm at. I haven't progressed in a long time. Let me know what you guys think about progressing in Mythic. It's gotten really hard at Chapter 8, so I'm having problems, but let me know where you're at in Adventure. So, Dungeons. No Man's Land, I can farm them all at 9. They're not a problem. I've been able to do that for a long time. So there's nothing much more to say there. They're all pretty easy. You Even as a beginner, you'll start getting up to level 9 really quickly in the game. It's not something that's that tough. I have been farming a lot of Wrathful Flood and a lot of Bane Wraith because most of my characters are water and wood. So I've been farming the most out of Wrathful Flood, but I've been doing a lot of Bane Wraith lately because I'm working on two or three wood characters in a row. Now, Arcane Dominator, of course, this is kind of in-game, right? Uh, these are the in-game dungeons. I cannot beat uh, 12 on Tulpa. I cannot beat 12 on Ash Mysteria. I cannot beat 12 on Queen of Tides. I am able to farm 11. I guess I can't do it on these either, can I? That's just the one I'm on. So I guess I'm farming 10 on Tulpa, 10 on Ash Mysteria, 11 on Queen of Tides, and these I just don't care about. There's not anything in here that I need right at the moment, so I'm good. They're also very, very tough. They're really tough for, for me. I don't have Gangelo. I don't have all the big, big wig characters, so these are really tough, and I don't really care about farming them right now, so that's where I'm at on those. On the Void Tower, I can get through Easy Tower all 100 every time. I've been farming it for a couple months now. I can't get past level one on hard. I can't imagine what mythic's gonna be like, the mythic tower. I don't know very many people who have gotten past this tower. Some of the best players I know are stuck on level 20. This tower might need to be nerfed a little bit. I don't want it to be handed to me, but I want to be able to get past level one. You saw my roster, it's not terrible. Why can't I pass level one on hard? If I'm farming mythic on campaigns, why can't I at least go a little bit above this? Very tough. Yeah, let me know where you guys are out on tower too. On the bounty hunts, we spent, just two days ago, we spent probably two to three hours trying to beat this one stage. 
a three hour stream trying to beat this one stage. It is tough. We tried every comp. I tried borrowing every kind of character. We tried every affinity. I'm telling you, we spent hours on this and we got close a couple times, but not close enough. Let me know your guys' strategy on stage 70 of Bounties, the Azrena one, because she is tough. I feel like once again, it's where my gear is lacking and something tells me I need more speed. But let me know where, how, where you guys are at and um, how to beat this one because I, I was raging a little bit the other night. And then of course, Dispatch, I mean, I'm at the point where everything is maxed out. Um, my, strategy, my strategy to this is if they're one or two star, I click here, I hit abandon, and then I wait for 30 minutes and come back and see what is there until I get a three or four star. I do not dispatch anything that is less than three star. Now, at one point I was hitting refresh for the 50 currency, but that, that dwindled my currency fast because you can sit here a million times and not get a three or four star. So it just works better for me to keep checking back every 30 minutes until I get three or four stars. So for my foodie guide, I'm on stage two, 34, and I'm needing to obtain 10 items of six star gear. That's just gonna passively come. I'm not gonna force, try to force that through. Um, it's just something passively you gotta do and then I'll move on. But that's where I'm at. As far as covenants, I have everything done except completing all Bounty Hunter stages and Void Tower on hard. I'll, I'll, I can safely say that it's going to be a while before I get those two done, but everything else is done there. My challenge quests, I have neglected these a lot. To be honest, I don't even know where I'm at. This is news to me here. Um, we've beat everything on this, and we're on the third tier here where I need to get... where we have to complete that 3-8 on Mythic difficulty 10 times. This one's really tough, where you have to complete 3-8 on Mythic in just three turns. Let me know how you guys are doing that. I haven't tried it, mind you, but I, I hear about people talking about it all the time. I'm a little worried about it, but it doesn't hurt to try, right? I have not tried it. Let me know what your guys' strategy is on that. And then I just have to obtain 10 items of 6-star Legendary. So that's another passive one that will eventually happen just by me playing the game. And I'm way behind on these. Like, I should probably look at them and progress in them a little bit. But see, like, I have neglected them, and I'm just seeing now if I defeat the Bane Wraith on stage three, I get to continue on. So I really have to work on these probably tonight, and I'll keep progressing them. I just have to pay attention to what I'm doing, right? So these will probably be pretty easy to progress in. Same with these. i just not paying attention. So I could spend some time and energy into probably progressing in these more so that it looks more impressive whenever I show this off here in another 30 days, right? So yeah, guys, that's about it, I think. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know where you're at and what level you are, who you're working on, all that good stuff below. If you guys need a guild, let me know. Come into my Discord with the links below here. Come say hi, tell me you need a guild, and we will get you in. We have five guilds running right now. If we need to make a sixth one, we can do that. Just come in and say hi and let us know. Also, if you're looking for a good conversation about the game or anything else that's nerdy or geeky or whatever, come by the Discord and come say hi and come chat with us. It's always a good time there. We're always having good conversations. With that being said, I love you all dearly. Thank you all for the support, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.